All right. Good afternoon and welcome back to a new edition of PCA Live. I am the PCA Executive Director, Scott Pierce. And today we got a great show. We've got Eddie Terrazona from Terrazona Cigars that's going to be joining us. We're going to find out all about Eddie, talk about his past with the cigar industry, what he's doing now, find out all about Terrazona Cigars. And we'll probably, I'm assuming we're going to talk about what's coming up, a uh, little thing called the PCA Trade Show that some of you may have heard of. So Without further ado, live from the Dominican Republic, our good friend, Eddie Terrazona. Eddie, welcome to the PCA Live. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. You're the wrong side of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Hello, everybody That's Hawaii, there. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go Hawaii loose, right? every year except last year. And this, yeah. this year, yep, this year in August, I'm going for the last two weeks. I'm going to kick it. I actually called um, John Fio. I was on the phone with him last week. I said, John. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm going to be there for two weeks, though. Make up for last year. I was going to say, you either got to go twice this year yeah, or twice that's really as long my vacation. This year. Yeah, perfect. That's a great place to vacation. Twice as long. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love it. So I've been doing that since 2008. Oh, wow. Okay. I think 2008, I went the year before. I was in 2007. It was the first time I'd ever gone to Hawaii. And I got the chance to go with my sister and her family because they were doing like a big thing there. And went over my birthday and we stayed at this, right. I can't remember what it was called, but it was this huge resort. It was fun. I snorkeled for the first time and yeah, it was like paradise on earth. Like it was unbelievable. It really is. <laughs> it yeah. really is. It's, it's worth the, you know, 12, 14 hours in travel. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah. They live on the West coast. And so it's like mm -hmm. a significantly shorter time to travel uh, for them. And they get the it's better like, deals. Yeah, exactly. 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 Lucky All there. right. So, Let's, um, for some of those that don't know you, um, you are in fact, Eddie Terrazona. And I just want to let everybody out there in cigar land know that this is Eddie's birthday. So Eddie is taking time out of his celebrations to come and talk <laughs> to us today. So I appreciate that very much. So very in between much. blowing out candles and eating cake and getting presents and all that good stuff, it's going to talk to us a little bit. Just popping bottles. There That's you go. That's even better, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And enjoying a good Terrazona cigar. So before we dive into that, I just want to mention this. You'd, you'd sent me some of these, and so I appreciate that. This is a pack of cigars. You can kind of talk about this. I love the packaging on here, the way it comes packed in. And these are your Connecticut wrappers. These are delicious. They got a good nuttiness and a nice criminess that I love, actually. So it's a very good cigar. Um, I, I would show the pack. I'm actually almost out of them. I think it's the second to last one. So I went through them very fast. So <laughs> So those are great, and I love the packaging. And, and so um, anyway, so uh, let's talk about your history in the cigar industry because you've got a pretty long and storied one. And so when did you first get involved in the cigar industry and in what capacity? Okay, so in 2001, I graduated from college. I went to Liberty University there in Lynchburg, Virginia. I was recruited by what's the, the, the British company, uh, Wolseley Enterprises. And Wolseley Enterprises is the parent company to um, Ferguson Enterprises. Okay, so Wolseley UK. Um, they 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 I went out to Newport News where their um, North American headquarters is. They recruited me in management right out of college. I was so lucky, and it was a great job for a kid coming from inner city Miami. I wasn't going to go back home, and um, eighty thousand dollars a year plus benefits and all this other stuff. But 9-11, recession, all that happened, and they came to me. They wanted me to move to North Cocoa Beach, Florida at the time, and it still is. But North Cocoa Beach, dude, that's like smaller than Lynchburg. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, how about you move me to, I thought, move me to San Juan, Puerto Rico for the utility sector. Oh, that, that would be a, <laughs> be a great time for me. <laughs> they said, no, we need your Spanish. We need you to move to North Cocoa. And I said, I'm not going one. They said, well, you have two weeks to make up your mind. Well, I still had my two weeks vacation. So I put it in after that phone call. So I actually had a month. <laughs> Always about the rules and the system. Right, um, right. But I had, I had a whole month to think about what I wanted to do. I almost went back to school because I had always wanted to just um, practice law. But I really was tired with school. And then um, really government and law are my first loves and passions. And football, that's my second passion. Okay, C cigars are my third. Okay, but this is why we um, get along so well, by the way. Love football, and I knew, I'll, yeah, I mean, it just they're fun stuff, but I knew I was going to starve. And uh, 
go back to school and spend all that money. That's a lot of money. And then um, football, it, a lot of it's who you know, and you got to work your way up. I had a family already. Um, it, it was going to be tough. And since I, I was about, I had to be a, a, probably about 16, 15, 16 years old. My brother took me to, down to a factory. It's not there anymore. It was a little manufacturer there in um, South Beach, down, back home Miami Beach. Well, down Miami, but Miami Beach. Um, South Beach Cigars. And I remember meeting this Cuban roller that was making their cigars for them. And my brother put in his order. You could, you could go in, um, get your own. They'll make your own little, you know, your order right there. And, and my brother would do this. He would do this with South Beach Cigars and El Credito, okay? Um, Ernesto's uh, little place down there. <laughs> so it's really always cool. I'd always been around all these folks, you know, legacies. And all. So it wasn't really a novelty. It was just life in Miami. But yeah. in this roller, it was when I left, I shook his hand. A slight man, not the biggest guy. Okay, well, very worn, but when he shook my hand, I swear he was going to break it. I mean, that grip of his, it's something about it, okay, the man. And understanding history with, you know, us and, you know, part of Miami history and Cuban history and all that, it just all, it just, it was encapsulated with that little handshake for me. And I said to myself, you know, I could, I could probably do this, okay one day who knows you always have to have options but that, that was early on fast forward um i had one month to decide and i looked at my options which one am i not going to starve at okay and those cigars so i started um learning as much as i could they actually gave me an eight month sevens package too love european companies when they get rid of you i mean they really <laughs> just take care of you very good. good. But um, so I had eight months and on their dime. So I want to know anybody from Ferguson Enterprises listening. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for all that money you gave me. Because <laughs> it, it just it was just like going back to school again and learning and asking people back home. Um, that's where it came out. I was still up in Lynchburg because, of course, having a family. So I was splitting my time two weeks and two weeks back and forth. And I ended up opening up a little retail shop up there i'm not a retailer i'll tell you that that i found that out even though i kept it for years i'm not a retailer but it became my office and the retail shop turned more into an office where people started complaining you're never open you're never there i'm like it's not really a retail shop much anymore so going back and forth to miami here it is now 20 years later okay this year here we are but it's been um it, it, it really has been a cool adventure. I mean, I, I wouldn't do it any other way because I don't think I'd know how to do it any other way. I didn't even know how to do it then. But yeah. you go learning and things just start falling into place. And here we are. And yeah. um, it, it was cool. One of the neat things about being a retailer, though, and, and, and not because we're here, you know, talking, but it was the PCA uh, or RTDA then. But RTDA. It was just neat meeting everybody and learning and learning and learning. And all, uh, some of these old timers who have since passed, and you know, legends, man, just awesome. And now here I am, twenty years later, and everybody's coming to me. I'm like thinking, not that old though. <laughs> 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 so that's really how I got started because I had to find something to do, and I had three options, at least for me. Nope. Very nice, very nice. So let's talk about Arizona cigars. I want to talk about all the various offerings that you have. Like I said, I'm smoking the Connecticut, but there's a handful of others. Uh, so that way people can kind of get to know your products a little bit more and just sort of your approach. I like talking to cigar makers because it's 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 an artistic endeavor, right? And it's the same thing that you know I learned when I was going through culinary school. Mm -hmm. Everybody has an approach in which they want to go about blending, right? You want your, what you focus on and how you go and, and select the tobaccos mm -hmm. and why you're selecting them, et cetera. I think that plays a very big part in how they're enjoyed, obviously. So let's talk about, you know, your, your line of cigars, what, what you offer, some of your mainstays, and then let's talk about your, your whole approach to, uh, you know, how you blend and what you want uh, your consumers to get out of that experience. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are, what are the Terrazona line of cigars? So of course we have the Terrazona side and we have the Caraballo side. Mm -hmm. 
the Ter- um, Terrazonas are all made in the DR for the most part, except for the M305s, the packs you have there. And all the Paraguayos are made in Nicaragua. Here in the DR, we use Tabacalera Willy Ventura, which we're sitting in right now. And in Esteli, we use Papito. Okay, so Tabacalera Papito, but Papito Gomez. For me, everything started, I, since I really had no direction, I had an idea of what I wanted and really wasn't about a particular blend or cigar. It was a story. And, and most everything I do is always about telling a story, I love stories. And I think that's why some people say I, I probably talk too much or <laughs> get long winded. I love telling stories. My first cigar was the 305, the Terrazona 305. I love Miami. I love home. It, Miami, you know, and growing up where I grew up, um, there's an attitude with it. Okay. Yeah. It's just different. Um, now, I wouldn't advise this to anybody. I mean, this is just me, my opinion. Um, looking back, my first cigar was a Maduro. Okay. A Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro on the 305. But I thought that was cool because, you know, you're from Carroll City and, you know, Maduro and you're, you're tough and this and that. But right, right, right. Yeah. I was in my mid 20s. <laughs> so, yeah. but that was my first cigar. Um, it started from there. And so when you go to 305, which is really, I thought it was describing a little bit of me. But then we got to the ecstasy, which happened, it was something that happened when I was 12 years old. Uh, then to the Gorilla 305 and to the Revolution 305. There actually is a backstory behind all those. The 305, of course, starting with just me being from Miami. The Gorilla 305, I think that was the chip on my shoulder. And it's a very complex cigar. So it was that chip on the shoulder. And I, and I wanted to have that cigar. People either loved. And this really, I mean, it was arrogant then because I was young <laughs> and I was ignorant <laughs> but today it I, I i like that it's still that cigar a lot of people either like or they don't so that love hate is complexity or this and that you know it, it, it's interesting the revolution 305 came out that really i started growing up then mm. um everybody thinks about the word revolution you know let's go start a war so no it was actually um it was inside you know each and every one of us this, whether it's a metamorphosis or something, we have to start growing up. We have families, we have responsibilities, mm-hmm. we have obligations. Yeah. And I was sitting playing dominoes one day at, at Miami Lakes, looking at all my friends, and I knew, you know, where everybody comes from and all. And it was really cool to see where we are, we were at at that point with families. Some retiring now because you know some of the guys I was playing dominoes with, they're older, and some some some, some folks. Kids are playing the major league baseball, or my son's getting ready for for to, to, for, 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 for football, and it, it, we all have a revolution inside of us, and it's not against the world. I think sometimes we take that little chip on your sho- our shoulder, and it's really redirected, okay, at the wrong folks or just wrong. I think it's a, a lot of um, whether it's our, our insecurities or I, I, it is what it is, but that's really. Everything's a story. The, uh, then we go over to the uh, nothing's different with the eight to eight. It has to do with a, a government contract and money. That's why the, the Vitolas okay, are all government. There you go. So we have on, on the Oscuro, you have FFOD for fistful of dollars only because, you know, <laughs> then it's a movie, but it's money. You of have course. the Shekel, you have the Benjamins, you have the Sterling. So it's always about a story. Okay. Oh. I try, and this is just me, this, if the cigar doesn't match up to the story, we're not using that cigar. It just has to fit. It's like you're writing something. Right. So that's my approach. I like this. I like the term in Spanish, es un sentido. It's a feeling, but I don't like the word in English, feeling. It's more, it's, 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 it's emotive. It's an emotion. You feel it. You, you get it. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Yeah, what I, what I like about that is that I think that most um, above average, more than more than your casual cigar smoker, connects with that because you're not smoking a cigar, um, you know, just as a one-off. You're smoking it because you're looking to enjoy it, and part of that enjoyment is 
if not the entirety of it, is that experience, right? Whether it's the atmospheric because you're with right. friends and you're having a drink or whatever the case may be. But even for, you know, the majority of my time, I'm enjoying it as it's, it's, it's a my moment and I'm sitting outside by myself and I'm having a drink at the end of the night and I'm just being able to mm -hmm. do that. There's an experience that goes with that, right? And to your point, if the story of that cigar isn't matching what you want from me, if it's decompression, if it's mellowing out or whatever the case may be, or if I'm with friends and I'm having something more because you want a little bit more kick to it or whatever it is that you're doing, it absolutely has to match. That cigar has to match the sentido that you're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, I, and I don't know if there's a manufacturer that would necessarily disagree with that. No, I, I, I don't think so. You know, <laughs> there's some, I, I like saying to people, I don't say this to everybody, but I've, I've mentioned this before. If you remember the cigar, let's say we're, we're, we, we all go on a trip together and have a great time. But if you remember the cigar more than you remember the time you had and people you were with, yeah. Yeah. maybe the cigar wasn't even worth it either. It, 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 it's, it's, it's the stories you make, the experiences you have. Uh, take it, a, a kid from me that grew up in inner city Miami who – now I look back and I say, wow, I am so lucky to be doing what I do, providing for my family, but to travel and meet folks from all over the globe, okay, from all walks of life. Well, cigars has afforded me that experience. Mm. That's fun, okay? It doesn't matter, and, and really, it doesn't matter whose cigar I'm smoking, okay? You can smoke a cigar and just be with great folks as long as you're having a good time. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, you know, I, I love how you say that because I had a, a really good friend of mine, and uh, oftentimes we get together every few months. Right. And uh, he was talking about the last time we got together. Well, <laughs> we got a say special hi, guest right quick, So we got Tony Bellotto here, everybody. <laughs> how are you doing? Long time no see, Tony. <laughs> so go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was just saying, I have a friend that, you know, he was, he was saying, uh, this was a while ago, but he was talking about how he was hanging out with some of the, the neighborhood dads. And I think that they were lighting off some old fireworks last fall or something like that with the kids. And he said, I was just sitting there having a beer and a, and a cigar that one of these other guys had given him. And he was, he was just like talking about how much he enjoyed that because we get together and there's a couple of my friends that, that we are obviously very regular cigar smokers. He's one of the lesser so yeah. ones. But the next time we got together, he was like talking about it with like this, you know, this new sense of, of interest uh, with cigars. And he he went back to that certain experience that he had that night with everybody else out lighting off fireworks and, and then just sitting back and enjoying a drink that night with us with cigars. And he was like, I get this now. He's like, for a lot of years, I would just have a cigar with you guys. He's like, but now now I totally get it. And it goes exactly to that whole point is that there is a story of his experience of when it clicked for him. What if I told so I told you my first love and passion is law and government, love politics, yeah. the whole thing. What you just said for me, when I hear it, I think about what the PCA is there for. Okay. And has always been there for that love and passion. We never said really, we said the cigar, but we didn't talk. We're not talking about tobacco or anything. Bunch of folks doing their thing, enjoying one another's company, that joie de vie that it brings. Yeah. I think that's really what it's about. And that's what we're fighting. We're fighting. Hey, look, just let me chill and have a good time. We're not hurting anybody. You know, none, none nefarious going on around here. That, and that's what we're fighting for. Okay. That for me is important. That I'm allowed to participate or have the occupation that I do, employ folks that I do in peace without cumbersome legislation or folks trying to put me out of business. What did I do to you? Okay. I'm not harming right. anybody. I just want to have a good old time and chill. Okay. For me, that's, that's really what cigars is all about. And we all have story. Um, I'm with, um, at the TP, I'm with Salsam. No, it's so cool. I haven't seen her in a while. And we're just standing there overlooking everything and <laughs> just talking. It was so cool watching everybody mingle, meet up with everybody, hey, hugs, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. And I looked at Salsa and I told her, you know what's so cool about what we do? All these stories, everybody's got a story. Yeah. Several years from now, those stories will be forgotten. A lot of them. 
But you know what? At least while we're here, we'll know those stories and we'll, we'll revel in those stories and we'll have a good time with those stories. Yeah. And that for me is important because, you know, at the end of the day, pe people are important. Okay. Yeah. No matter what walk life you're from, people are important. And, and, and that's why I'm really big on supporting the retailers. Lord knows the countless of conversations and parties and relationships and business deals and, and golf outings, um, family outings that you know, people get to know each other, that they're making their stories. Okay. They're, exactly. they're writing these little snippets that go along. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why I like them. enjoying the cigar with them this. because yeah, well, that's why I like enjoying the cigar with a lot of these. And, and that's why I think that it works so well that it with, with celebrations, right. With milestones, because the sense of smell is the strongest at evoking memory. Right. And so when you have a cigar, particularly one that, you know, you, it goes along with it. Every time you smoke that you get a chance to kind of relive that or remember that in a pretty vivid detail. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why for me, I, I love having a cigar with a good time because it always evokes those, those good memories. Right. And that's why for me, at least there's a, there's a, there's a great way. I mean, that's why it honestly is a way for me to decompress because smoking a cigar reminds me of good times. It reminds me of happy times. It reminds me of friends, of family and, and, you know, achievements and special occasions. You know, it's interesting when we're at the, when we're at the trade show and, um, and I noticed it one day, it was probably about doing the show at PCA seven, eight years ago. I don't smoke as much as I normally do on the floor. I'm so busy. It's just going, going, going. And I don't have time to really enjoy it. And we're not sitting down with folks or having a good time. It's just, you know, you're conducting business. And it, 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 I hate that, that, that cigar time being taken for me. It's fun. But I, I noticed that a few years ago. And somebody came up to me once at a show and he goes, I, I haven't seen you smoke much. And I explained to him, it's no fun when you're so busy like this. And you're just going, <laughs> going, going. Just a me thing. But catch me afterwards, once we're off the right. floor. <laughs> right. Right. My so, time. <laughs> so there's a lot that we've talked about here, and I want to dive deeper because I know a lot of what you're talking about, and we've talked at length about quite a few things here. But I want to kind of go um, a little bit deeper. And so um, a few subjects here. Let's go back to a little bit what you're talking about for um, – and just to call attention, if you can show the hat right there, do it with passion. That That is your calling card. That is something that, you know, is, is out there that's you. You know, the, you know, exactly. Do it with passion. And it's on the packaging right here of these cigars that I'm smoking. And so that's something I think that anybody knows you, um, uh, you know, all jokes aside, you're a little subdued right now talking to you uh, on this live as opposed to like some of the conversations we have is that I think anybody that talks to you one, one for, for more than like, you know, 30 seconds, you know, you, you're just, your, your passion is on your sleeve, right? And, and it's so strong for this industry. And so, but it's not about, you know, you, Eddie, the guy that talks, it's about you, Eddie, the man of action. Um, this, you know, a few months ago, you stepped up in a big way, um, helping leading by example here with a donation to PCA, not to because of PCA, but because of, of the work and doing things um, in defense of the industry. Uh, so I just wanted to, um, A, again, you know, from absolute bottom of my heart, just because I know what it takes to, to, to you know, do a trade association like this that's in the trenches and say thank you because that's a uh, it's a huge um again putting your your money where your mouth is and and again leading by example in that regard um but the other part of that is is that um kind of the why behind that you know and and what what you hope to see um you know as somebody who's been in this industry for a long time somebody who's who's taking more of a leadership uh, position in this in, in this instance of wanting to go out there and, and again letting your actions speak for you, but also going out there and, and doing these things. Um, where is it that you would like to see uh, PCA as we are now, but like what exactly, you know, for the future of the industry and kind of your, your sort of vision, your desire and your hope for that, for the industry and for PCA and in that relationship with the industry. Right. Well, I'll be, uh, you know, and we've talked about it and, and I'll be frank here. Um, There, you know, the PCA, and, and not just the PCA, but, you know, a lot has changed in our industry in the last, forget about, I, I was going to say 20 years, but let's talk about 15 years, 10 years, just last five years. Yeah. Um, 
so I also, and when that happens, the PCA also has to adjust and, and, and to always lead, okay, our industry. And I understand that, you know, it's with retailers, but I think also um, manufacturers appreciate the leadership, okay, when the PCA steps up and does its thing, okay, I think we do appreciate that. But as a former retailer, okay, I, I, I can speak from, from that front mm -hmm. too. It is better if we are standing together okay. instead of squabbling, fighting, this and that. If you don't like something, pick up the phone. Call Scott. Exactly. Call Josh. Please. Yeah. Call someone. You know what? You, you know who the board members are. Call them. Let them know. And, and it shouldn't be, and not in a selfish manner, really look at it as the industry as a whole. Okay. There's, there, there, there's too much work or trying to work against us at times that we don't have the luxury to be, you know, a bunch of little piss ants bitching and complaining about things. It was, um, but but I'm going to tell you something about that. When, when I when um when I had decided to make a donation, it really stemmed from last year in Glen Loop. Um, used to live in Lynchburg, Virginia. Glenn lives 45 minutes down the road, Roanoke. Roanoke, yep. But um, he picks up the phone. He calls me <laughs> in a very forceful manner. <laughs> he goes, Eddie, <laughs> and of course, CRA at the time. But he's like, you know what? We've benefited your company a lot. Okay, we're out there. We're doing it. When are you going to step up? I swear. I swear. Pretty much his words. When are you going to step up? You know. Well, he was right. What I'm gonna say he was right. Twenty five hundred dollars. There it goes. You're right. Yeah. And I started thinking about PCA, and instead of complaining about what's wrong, and we should, we should complain when we see things or, we're, or there are things we're not happy about. But at the same time, it has to be productive. It has to be constructive. There we go. Okay. It has to be to make us stronger as an industry. Understand the value of the retailers and the local tobacconists for me as a manufacturer today. It's important for my brand, for my industry, our, our brands as a whole, and our industry. And when I saw the board make the donation and then um, I saw Pete do the same thing. And I'd already been thinking about it, but I'm like, yeah. But then something just snapped and I said, you know what? Screw it. <laughs> I, I got it's more it was more of a conviction if anything and i think even if you don't have a lot to give it, whether it's financially or your time just try and give something number you don't have to give ten thousand dollars you have to give 20 you could you could give a hundred okay i think about think about all the um the members we have just re, let's just go with the retailers if every retailer, uh, how many, how many, how many retail members do we have? About? We have roughly about nine hundred, uh, just under a thousand retailers. That represents just under three thousand stores. Okay, three thousand. What if every store today, every owner decided to give one hundred dollars? That's yeah. that's collective. That's a group. I'm not right. talking about collective like socialism. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about. Dude, there's power in numbers when we start getting on the same page. Okay. We're, we're, we're fighting forces that have deep pockets. The deepest. But not the only deepest that, when pockets. you choose not to part, yeah. And when you choose not to participate, what you're saying is it's okay to take my shop. It's okay to take my livelihood. It's, a it's okay to take my kids. Clothes, school, and whatever. College I money, it's right? Okay exactly. It's okay to take what I'm trying to put on the table, right? College money. And so, for me, that's not okay for 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 state legislatures and Capitol Hill to do. It is not okay. Yeah. Okay? I think since our founding, it's never been okay for anybody to take anything. Okay. Un, whether it's un, unfairly or unjustly or grossly in a gross manner.
Oh, and as we always talk about, it's a legal product. It's enjoyed legally by responsible adults. Mm-hmm. It's not anything that leads to, you know, I- I- inebriation and car crashes. You know, it's it's nothing of that nature. They have not. And in mm-hmm. fact, the opposite has been true throughout the research that we've done. They cannot find deleterious population health outcomes as it relates to cigar use. And it's interesting because we've seen this weird divergence where you would all yeah, uh, you would assume, on, you know, unfortunately, you know what happens when you assume a convergence come, but with marijuana smoking, right? And we talk about the relaxation and how people enjoy it, and the and those aspects, which are also good for mental and physical health as well, as we know. But you've seen this divergence where they continue to go after premium cigar smoking, but yet they're going in the opposite direction with marijuana smoking and trying to make that more accessible, you know, whereas that's mind altering and sure there's health benefits that, that are there as well, but it's just, it's interesting at a, at a policy level that that's the divergence that we're experiencing here. And right. so it's, it's really difficult. And I know that it's easy, you know, when you're talking amongst friends and it's easy to make a political statement as if you're planting a flag in the ground, but unfortunately there are so many different forces at, at play here whether it's the opposition with deep pockets or whether it's it's obtuse and uh, uh, elected officials that have an ax to grind. And, and that's why, you know, I think that most people in the industry now realize because we're still sort of in the infancy of, of this industry needing to be an advocacy mm-hmm. industry. Uh, but I think most people realize now that this is a constant thing that we need to consistently right. jab, 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 jab in preparation for the big uppercuts. And I think that's where... Um, that's where the change comes. You know, a lot of these forces coming, especially as of late, people have got to understand. It, it's not that, it's not that, I'll put it like this. It's not that I don't think the PCA said uh, we we want these problems and all that. But you also need the finances to keep up with those problems, adjust staff. You know, dude, I'm going to tell you, lobbying up on the hill is not cheap my brother uh, my brother um used to work with um um the former senator from florida um connie mack okay oh there you go yeah and oh my gosh the 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 money behind all the stuff he would tell me with the lobbyists and all it's crazy um so i think people have to understand you want to fight it's gonna cost some bucks and, and that's okay. Like I said, it's not, you don't have to have a lot, but as a collective, we do have a lot. I, I know we can make that impact yeah. collectively. Nobody's saying, yeah. you know, some one company come out and, hey, here's $100,000. Now, if you want to, God bless you. Okay. But I, I do it, you know, because that conviction of what we're doing, it is legal. Okay. It is, it, I think, um, I think it's a noble industry. Okay. But, by and large, the folks in this industry are good people, hard workers, just trying to do their thing. And I think that's why, and I, like I said, as a former retailer too, I, I'm going to fight for them. Okay? Yeah. But I'm also going to put my money where my mouth is, not to be cliche-ish, um, because I can. And that's just where I stand. But a lot of it has to do with just if, if you believe in something bad enough, you fight for it. And for all those folks out there, and this is not the bash on anybody, I understand uh, where economics comes in, but don't don't criticize if you haven't paid for it. Don't it's a, you don't it's not even like earning the right to complain about it. You pay. I, I, I got to say that it is really I, for me. You when when you give to the PCA, when you make your donation, when you pay your dues, when you do all that, you pay for the right to complain when you see something not right with the organization that you're looking up to. Okay. But, I, but, yeah. but I think that's, that's and it's part of being a member. Too. Exactly. Yeah, it's part of being a yeah, member, right? And when you're a part of that membership, then, then that's the yeah. forum and that's, yeah. Yeah. Then that's actually leading to a, a couple of the other questions I kind of wanted to talk to you about too. So mm-hmm. that's perfect. Um, yeah. um, participation wise. Um, and then to the, the second part of, of you kind of slowing down and being able to enjoy a cigar with people, but, but that's just it. And I mean, I think that we've, we uh, are starting to look, we've recognized this for a while and, and obviously 2020 kind of being a little bit of a, you know, obviously chaos year, not having the, the, the show in the annual uh, meeting, but you know, look for the first time ever, 
uh, open elections, right? So that way people can get involved that way. Um, you know, we're going to have a session where we're going to talk about um, committees, right? And so I know we started that aspect of it, but then, you know, the shutdowns and everything else, you know, we obviously had to focus attentions elsewhere and that kind of got derailed, but now we're back on track where we want more people to be able to participate because again, if, if, if the only avenue that people have is to complain and, 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 and there's no other avenue for it, but just to complain, we want to take that complaint. Let's get that energy into something positive you talked about. Right. And a lot of it can be, you know, it, it's tough for a 15 person board and a few staff here to be local everywhere and to really truly understand what's going on at these various places. So if we have better feedback mechanisms, then it's going to be better for the industry as a whole to be aware of everything and allow the organization to be able to respond appropriately. Well, you just brought something up. The, this is me. I shared it with you. I really think we should, uh, you know, the PCA should be, there should be regions for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hearing the voices from the, if, so you've got DC all, all over here, all those voices, but regions, because every region is also different. States are different. Look at my state. Love Florida. Love it, love it, love it. Texas. It's great. Yeah. It's easy. We're cruising. Right. Pennsylvania, right. easy. You're cruising. Uh, but 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 not all regions are the same. The states are the same. And I think, yeah, it's great to have the, the, the states and all, the, you know, their own, the state boards and all. But I, I want to see regional. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to broken up in regions. Okay. And representation from those regions, those shop yeah. owners that are elected. Through these elections and, and i know y'all are talking about it but for me that's important because i want to hear the voices mm -hmm. i hear everyone's yeah. voice uh, we're all yeah. look we're all in this together you know it's interesting mm -hmm. i mean i'm not gonna bring tony he just happens to be here tony's got shops he's in ohio right ohio and their licensing sucks okay i know i think her name is rose what is lady over there rose whatever her name is she's call me we need your i'm like no you don't i told her um, they kept on bothering me, Denman, Michigan. And I told them, you know what? I'm a Florida state company. Call the department of state or our, 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 our state department that handles businesses and all that. If you have a problem with taxes and this and that, I'm not, you can take it up with them. I swear they never <laughs> called me again. Then one lady yeah. called me and said, we're sorry, this and that. Okay. Right. And, um, I swear that that was the last, this was when they started with that licensing thing. Oh boy. But I have the confidence and, uh, Maybe the chutzpah to stand up to them. We have to have the chutzpah, lo cojones, to stand up and say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. Okay. Yeah. Try and make dumb hoops for something legal? I mean, yeah. give me a freaking break. But that, yeah. that, that's just me. But I, but, but, but I really do think that our, our brick and mortars, our local retailers are so important. So important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no, there's no, we don't have retail shops. Yeah. Well, and, 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 I think that we've kind of reached a saturation point with with um, sort of the commoditization and I'm not even talking cigars, but just in general of sort of online. I think the lockdowns and having everything at our fingertips and missing out on that. But when you talk particularly about cigars, the element of the experience does come down to human to human connection, somewhere to enjoy it. And mm -hmm. it, it, there's so much involved with selecting, choosing, smoking and experiencing particular products that for me, I've always enjoyed going and talking to the tobacconists about things and, and kind of going through the, you know, the same way that, quite frankly, if you're going to a restaurant, oftentimes, it's particularly the higher end restaurants, you're talking to them about how it's prepared, right? Because I know having worked in those establishments yeah. before, the chefs will sit down with the staff and they go through, here's how this is prepared, here's what we do it, because they want to convey that to the people that are going to be enjoying the meal. It's the same kind of thing here. And that's Surprise. one of the reasons I didn't know this, obviously, at the time, but that's one of the important reasons of the trade show is the ability to come talk to you and talk to all the manufacturers about your products, how these are done, because I think it transitions and translates through to the consumer. Um, one thing I did want to, I know we're starting to get a little bit late on time, but I wanted to go back to this. So one of the things that we're doing new this year is we're doing an after hours cigar lounge on the show floor. So it's a large space. We know that at the time, especially when we designed these, we've always wanted to have more space for networking and get togethers, right? And more opportunities for that this year. We kind of had some space issues and some other things and we weren't really sure what was going to be open to smoke and what wasn't we just knew we had permission to smoke 
in our area. So we wanted to build the most smoker friendly place to relax. And so we have this cigar lounge every night. And so um, you stepped up and said, Hey, we, we want to do this sponsorship. Um, so it just kind of, I wanted to ask you about that because you're going to sponsor one of those cigar bars on Sunday evening. And I kind of wanted to talk to you because you're like, look, I want to be able to, to relax. You're going to be slammed. You're in the Sutliff booth. I want everybody to, who's coming to, so your Sutliff is your distributor. If I right. make sure I say that correctly. So it'd be at Sutliff booth. So make sure you find them there. Uh, but you wanted to be able to have this time to sit back. Pipe to enjoy cigar. <laughs> exactly. I love Jeremy, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so you know, you wanted to have the time to to sit back, relax, have drinks, and be and being able to meet with folks. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I, um, not to put words in your mouth, but I just wanted people to know that you know, Sunday nights, Arizona's night, and and to come and see right. Eddie and to to hang out with you and and to talk and enjoy an yeah. evening smoking cigars. No, and, and I'm glad and and, I, and I'm grateful that you guys have allowed us to participate more and interact more with PCA. It just um. It's just my conviction about the local retailers, brick and mortars. It's tough for a lot of them out there too, especially mm-hmm. with the environment. We're going, some are still going through, depending on where you live and what we've gone through. Like I said, being in Florida, we're, it, even though we were a little bit more fortunate because we were locked down for what, one month, that was what, last June ish or so, whatever. Yeah, I think July, um, you guys kind of were back. Right. Yeah. But. It's unfortunate because I could probably name five shops right now in Florida because of it. Good shops too. Okay, um, they're no longer around. Okay, they've been there for for, for quite some time. So uh, every little bit helps, and everything we can do to at least on our part to bring attention to the PCA. I know there are a lot of grumblings. I get it. Let, let, let's not hide that. Okay, let's, let's be yeah. honest here. But at least if you got grumblings, take it to you guys. Okay, maybe you guys. I mean, don't don't take it wrong. Maybe you guys do, do deserve a little bit of tongue lashing every now and then. But it better be constructive. Okay, we. Well, I mean, I guess I look at it. What else do we have? You gonna start all over? <laughs> right, right, right. Mm. Well, good luck and- with that. Okay. Yeah, well, and, and and one of the things is that um, is the board is receptive, and and and, and unfortunately, I've worked closely with them for three years, and have we're having an entire feedback session on Saturday during lunchtime learning for people to come ask questions, you know, voice concerns. What cool. about this? What about that? Are we thinking about this? So not only are we going to do a little bit different in terms of the annual meeting, um, and not just kind of going, we got to do a traditional association business, obviously. But we're going to go through some things that, that we've never really gone through before because, look, it's a part of – you talked about revolution, right? And the we as PCA need to have – or a re-evolution, as it were, right, to, to, to do a turn of phrase there. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's really kind of all about we need to kind of grow and adjust and, and be able to, to merge into what is required of us now because of the environment in which we find ourselves. And so that's part of this growth process. Yeah. And yeah. what's going to make it most beneficial is the more people being involved. Exactly. Yep, yeah. exactly. You have to reassess, regroup, and execute. And yep. sorry to get a little bit military on y'all, but that's how it was. The OODA you know, loop, right? The OODA loop. You think you have the – yeah. What's that? The OODA loop. The O-O-D-A? Yep. So, well, I look at it like this. You think you have your mission straight and you want everything to go smoothly. Not the world, that's not the way life works. It's always change. It's always in flux. But you got to regroup, figure it out, and say, okay, let's go. Don't second guess yourself. Just do it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Get as much information you can. And you're not gonna work. Look, you're not going to please everybody. I want to tell everybody, you know, with your organization, you're not, you're, you'll always have those people that uh, are, will bitch and complain, not going to be happy about something. But as a whole, and, and, and I think as a whole, both retailers and manufacturers are looking to you guys for guidance. And, and when I say guidance, we don't need guidance for our company. Okay, I've got a great staff with yeah. Ben, Willie, and my sales team. I've got a freaking unbelievable staff. But that direction from the top, okay, that has the entire collective saying, okay, this is, this is how we have to tackle whether it's state legislatures, Capitol Hill, okay, Logan municipalities, 
Okay. That's where it's, that's what we have to do. And if we're, if everybody's just um, grumbling unproductively, I, I, I'm very opinionated. <laughs> They're laughing. <laughs> I'm very opinionated. But I tell everybody, you don't have to agree with me. I just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you, you got something from my opinion, even though you don't say, oh, yeah, okay, we'll do whatever you want. No. But if you could hear, you know, the spirit of what I'm saying and say, you know what, there might, there might be a valid point in there somewhere. <laughs> like, no, I'm not omniscient. I don't know it all. No, but I do know this. We're a lot stronger together, unified, okay, especially in this political climate, then we are separated. And yep, that's what it is. Okay, let's not bury our heads in the sand and saying, oh, well, you know, they'll take care of it. That's what I pay them for. Really? That's it? All right. Buy your kids clothes, send them to school and saying and whatever else and say, yeah, th they'll raise themselves. They, they can take care of themselves. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Guidance. And the industry and, and the industry wants guidance, and that's what you guys are there for. Okay. And I'm rooting for you guys. I am rooting for you guys as a former retailer and as a current manufacturer. I am rooting for you guys. Okay. A, a lot of folks are. It may not yes. seem like it with, with, with everything that's being said. But a lot of folks, a lot of folks are rooting for you. That's why a lot of folks, in spite of companies that aren't going to be at the show this year, that's okay. I respect their, their decisions. We're sure. going to be there because we're rooting for you. And we're going to put our money where, where our mouth is. We're going to lead not from behind, but from the front. Okay. And we're going to be standing with you guys saying, we got this. It's that plain and yeah. simple to me. Not rocket science. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, and and uh, you know, it, all I can really say to that is is amen, and and uh, again, thank you very much because it's, uh, you know, last couple of years, uh, not to to beat the dead horse, but you know, just uh, trying, obviously, not having a trade show here and kind of trying to work through all, all of that here as far as an association and and uh, mm -hmm. and everything else, but you know, look, we're we're back, we're excited. Um, you know, I've made this comment quite a bit. I mean, I've. I did not anticipate the uh, rate at which retailers were going to be registering for this show, but it's it's exciting. There's going to be a lot of retailers right. at the show. I think people are ready for it. Um, you know, I, I I didn't, you know, it wasn't a corny turn of phrase, but and I think it's true, even though maybe some people take it that way. But this really is, I think, in a lot of ways, somewhat of a of a family reunion that that we're getting together. That's why we're calling it that because Very I think so. <laughs> people just want to get back together and have a good time and see old friends that they consider family and and right. and have that good time. I'll, you know, I'll be honest. We were talking. I mean, because we we've now got a growing staff and all. And, you know, talks came in. Do we bring everybody? Do we leave? How's the show going to be? And um, Ben and I sat down and we're like, no, we're going to take everybody. We're bringing everyone. This is how it is. This is this is this is what we signed up for. When we said, you know, we're going to support. This is what we're going to do, and everybody's going to be there. Uh, and, and I'm I'm thankful that we're we're going to be able to. But it just shows that. You know, no matter what hiccups or issues there are, you know, just stay the course. Stay the yeah. course. Okay. And, and that, that's, that goes for the retailers, goes for manufacturers, that goes for, you know, you guys. Okay. I, 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 know, I know, I mean, I know you get it every day. Okay. And I'm glad that I'm not you right now. <laughs> but, but no, just stay the course and, 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 and you, you have the metal to do it, have the perseverance to just, see it through and i do believe that we keep on fighting that that it, you know i was um my best friend walter Heilig, met in college at liberty because of football um this was just a few years ago um somebody asked him this is exactly how the question was posed to him does he really believe half i mean half the shit he says and without skipping a beat walt uh, walt looks at him and he goes no he believes it all Okay, you get, get stick with it, go with it. Don't don't back down. Don't 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 let you know policy. I'm not going to say liberal conservative because on both sides. Mm -hmm. Be real. Yep. Just, this is on both sides. Yep. You're sure more than another, but it's on both sides. Don't back down. Don't ever back down. Dual passion is not a moniker I've used. I've been saying that way before I even got in this industry. Okay. And, and, and I, I told Ben, we were down in Costa Rica the other day, I told, the reason I never say or not at all, 
or not at all. Essentially, you didn't do anything, so you quit. It's all the same to me. Just do it with mm -hmm. passion. Just do it. Okay. You're going to do it. Set your mind to it. Execute. That's it. Excellent. So. All right. Well, we're coming up on our time. Eddie, once again, thank you. Thank you for joining well, us you. on your birthday. I hope you are uh, having an amazing day. And again, everybody, make sure we uh, at the trade show, come and see Eddie and the entire Arizona team at the Sutliff. I already booth. am. <laughs> uh, there you go. Perfect. Already celebrating. Make sure Sutliff booth, come and see uh, Eddie and his entire team. Also come and enjoy a cigar and, and enjoy the bar that Eddie's going to be sponsoring on that Sunday night. And uh, I think we got a couple of other surprises that I think we have in store for, for the show and uh, as well. Yes, so do. hopefully people on site, we want to keep a little bit of a lid on that because some, some exciting things brewing. So anyway, Eddie, I look forward to seeing you in uh, one month. I mean, we are basically one month out now. So uh, look yes. forward to seeing you. Give my best to uh, your better half and uh, your entire family. And I hope Thank you, you have much, safe sir. travels. Thank you so much for joining us All today. Right. Take care and uh, have a great rest of your birthday. Take care, everyone.